two. What's going on? You got some wood, dude. Second nice. place wood. Second place wood. <laughs> you weren't expecting that. No, I was not. I was not. Second event with this car to get on the podium. Second is like insane. Wait, you mean your grocery getter family car here? Yeah, it's a four door. It's my street car. It's got license plates on it. I... It's got blinkers. Yeah. I drive to work every day. So what happened to your other Civic? Do you want to talk about it? I mean, I don't know. Well, Maybe I wanted briefly. to get featured again on another video, so I decided to wreck it at Road America to build a new car. But no, like in all seriousness, um, Road America last year, fighting for the championship against Jeremy Swenson, and it came down to the last race. We were neck and neck the whole season, came down to the last race, there was a little bit of rain involved, uh, an invert on the start, and I was losing position pretty quickly to Jeremy, and we came around the kink, a lot of cars going too wide, it was kind of dicey, and there was a car off in front of us. And then another car touched, and then everybody kind of woed way up because there was a wreck that was about to happen. And I wasn't really looking far enough ahead, and I kind of came up to it pretty quickly, and I had to make a split second decision, and I chose wrong, and I ended up kind of going for a gap that was about three fourths of a car's width. And I spun myself out. Um, I hit basically Mio's front fender with the quarter panel, and it just sent me right into the wall. Oh no. Oh, so. Sorry. Luckily, like the hit wasn't too bad. Like I was okay, but like my ego and my emotions were pretty badly bruised, and the car itself was uh, really badly wrecked. So frame rails, firewall, everything on the front right corner was completely pushed back, and like that was the end of my hatch. That car was inspirational. It was such a yeah. I love that car. Fast and yeah. good looking. Yeah. And I really I try to build good looking cars that go fast. And I've had that car for since 2015 or 2016. Like that's the car I started road racing with. I uh, got my comp school license with it, modified it, B-swap, K-swap, and to kind of send it off on a flatbed like that, it, it was really painful. I cried. I cried because, I mean, it was my baby. I spent so much time on it, perfecting it, and it was really good. When it went away, it was probably the fastest I've ever been and almost won the championship, but I didn't really care about that. Like, I lost my car. So, no. lost the championship, lost the car. I think the worst part about that weekend was like, I put a, like a sour taste in the whole weekend. Like, I kind of ruined the celebration for Jeremy who won the championship, because like, my car was destroyed and everybody felt bad for me. And like, I felt terrible for them, because winning GLTC, it's not easy, especially the championship. Like, you should be celebrated. And like, he didn't really get that opportunity to celebrate. And I, I still feel terrible to this day that I, kind of screw Jeremy over in that sense because I don't know it's it's a tough story <laughs> it's crazy to me because it's just so many races over the year and yeah. it's just so much pushing so much battling I so mean. yeah me and the hybrid boys we went all out we went to Coda Gingerman Mid Ohio Gingerman again we went to Heartland Road and Mary we went to all of the races to compete for this championship like, we really wanted to win it. I won it in 2020, and I really wanted to kind of defend the title. And it literally, we were just mere points away in the last race. So it was just a matter of who was going to finish ahead of the other driver in the last race. And when you're kind of in that mindset, you know, you're not thinking clearly. And I made the wrong decision. Like, I should have probably slowed way down and, and kind of uh, been more cautious. But I've been racing for so long, and my mindset was that, like, I was invincible in this car, you know? Like, yeah. I was one with the car, like, I knew what the car needed, I knew I, what I needed to do, and you learn real quick that that's not the case, right? Yeah. Like, it's extremely dangerous, and the decisions you make on track can uh, really have significant impacts. So, but, so, why is it that you didn't build another egg? So, after it all went down, um, I kind of, like, like, a week later, I was like, all right, what are we doing next? Like. I'm done with like sulking around and feeling bad for myself. Like, let's like build something. And I've always wanted to build a four door sedan, mm -hmm. always. This has this been like my dream car for two or three years now. Cause I was so inspired by the Japanese touring cars, JTCC back in the nineties. So I was like either A, I'm going to try to fix the hatch or B, I'm just going to build a new sedan. And I kind of shopped around a little bit, talked to a few guys who can repair chassis. And they basically told me, hey, it's going to be like five to $6,000, but it's no guarantee the car's ever going to be the same. So I was like, like, I don't know, like, I didn't want to take that risk. So then basically some dude on Instagram hit me up, Daryl, and he's like, hey, man, like, I got a sedan shell in Florida. Like, I want to donate it to you. I want you to build the most badass race car you can do. And I was like, dude, let's do it. It's crazy because for somebody who's not really who doesn't follow GLTC yeah. and just, just 
racing in general, it seems counterintuitive to have a bigger car with more doors. Well, it's not that big. Okay. It looks it looks big, but I'm racing against Corvettes and Caymans. This car is this probably one of the smallest cars in the class. But yeah, it is a four door sedan. It's not really intuitive to build a four door car, but that's why I built it. Hmm. Okay. All right. So let's talk about it. So starting from chassis prep, I mean, because it was a bare chassis. Yeah. What did it? It didn't come with a motor. It didn't come with. A yeah, lot it came of things, with nothing. Right? So the car was pretty clean on the outside. It had a little bit of rust on the inside that I basically had to strip the entire car down to bare metal. Uh -huh. And the goal was to build a competitive GLTC race car that is heavily inspired by JTCC. So that means it's got to be low. It's got to have very simple aero. It's got to have big wheels. And then it's got to be fast. I'm not going to build a car that's going to you know, be a mid-pack kind of car. So. I love the wings so much. They, yeah, it's it's like a it's a replica of the real JTCC. So really? I had to, even it's like it's not that functional, but like I had to run it just because it looks cool. Yeah. But anyway, in order to kind of achieve the ride height that those cars ran, like I knew I had to tub all four corners. So I kind of took a page out of the Drifters book. No way. This yeah, is it's tub. tub. Every four corners is tub. Does it still open? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see it right here. <laughs> Wait a minute. That is so cool. All four corners. Yeah. So, so that was how, the how first, much more clearance do you have? I mean, you can see it right corners. here. It's uh, oh. a fender would kind of go like this. Okay. Okay. Whereas I raised it up probably two or three inches. So you can see a portion. I had to cut this out and then raise this just to fit the tub in here. But how is it that the door still closes? Well, it's uh, it's cut right there. Oh, got it. Got it. So I had got to. It. it was a lot of work. So got it. Because I got the car for free and it wasn't like the cleanest chassis, I was like, you know what, let's cut this up, let's try it, let's see if I can actually manage to build this. And it ended up working out. So I actually went to Tractor Supply and I bought steel trailer fenders. Because <laughs> I guess that's what all the drifters do. But like, it's so crazy how tucked it is. It, it's going to be lower next year and it's going to be on 18s next year. But we'll get into those details later. Yeah. But for now, it, it works pretty good. But yeah, anyway, all four corners, cut out all the OEM sheet metal, welded in tubs. Um, the back was really tricky because kind of shaping the OEM material and like making the chassis rigid and like welding it back in to like make sure you're not making the, you know, like making the car worse. Um, so that was a pretty big challenge. And uh, we then did this crazy cage. I got this cage builder in Cincinnati, Adam Brock. He does rally cages. I was like, hey, I need the best cage I can get. And rally guys, they know what they're doing. So we built this crazy cage that ties into all these points, into the tubs, into like the B pillar, A pillar, all around the A pillar. And then it also ties into the front shock tower. So I'll pop the hood here in a bit and show you just how much work went into it. But the, I guess the crazy thing is, I got this car at the end of last year and I really started to go crazy with it in January of this year. So eight months later, the car is racing, and I went I went ham on it for basically every day, every weekend. It was so much work, but fortunately for me, I have an amazing girlfriend that kind of understands the passion I have, and she knew I had to do this. So she kind of let me spend time in the garage and get all this done, and I'm really grateful for her and all the people that supported it. But yeah, it's been a crazy build. Can we take a look yeah, under let's the Yeah, let's, uh, let's pop this off. You want to know what else is crazy? This wow. is the same hood from the hatch. No way. Yeah. It fits. So not only that, the, the hatch got wrecked right here and the hood kind of just like popped up. And I was like, hey, there's only one crack here, one crack there, fix it up. And it's like perfect. Shoot, so, that's awesome. So what are we looking at here? All right, I guess we can kind of show off the tub work here. So, oh, okay. So you can kind of see the tubs here on the front and the tubs on the back. So that's probably two or three extra inches of travel that you can get and it's also it's also significantly wider i made it right up to the frame rail so i can fit a pretty wide tire that's a super duper custom shock tower that i made to match up to my upper control arm almost exactly so the, the challenge with this car is to get it really low and the arms everything kind of gets a little wonky so i had to make some custom arms to fit up in there and they're kind of designed around that arm so the arm at full compression is like a few millimeters off of this top surface. What? But yeah, so the tubs and the shock towers was like the main work to get it at the right height. And then uh, there's a lot of other things that kind of were challenging to make it work as well. So this is the same powertrain that was in the hatch, K24 RSX transmission. 
mostly stock internals. Um, it's got the RBC or RSX Type S oil pump, 50 degree VTC, and then uh, a lot of hybrid racing, you know, goodies. And the whole engine is actually raised an additional three fourths of an inch because the chassis height is significantly lower. The oil pan on the K's, it, the K24 is a pretty tall engine, and with the units of fab oil pan, it like sits on the ground. So if I ran the off the shelf Hasport mounts, the oil pan would be all on the ground currently. So we raised it three fourths of an inch. And with that came a lot more challenges because um, obviously you can kind of see the, the valve cover doesn't really clear the hood, but we raised the hood up to clear the engine. And then we also raised the fenders to kind of match the hood profile oh. and also clear the tires when they turn. Got it. So yeah, there's a ton of things, a lot of little details, but um, the fender is radius because if I run the OEM fender, it's like an extra inch and I wouldn't be able to turn because it would just hit the fender and the same with the bumper. You can kind of see how the bumper's cut. So with the radius and the raise of the fender, it kind of makes me able to turn. And I'll show you the video. I almost lost it in the top 10 shootout and I was full lock trying to save it at the bottom of the hill. But yeah, it's uh, a lot of stuff going on to make it work. And then of course, once I got the car lowered, you had to kind of fix the geometry to make it work. So I worked really closely with um, Home Developments. So we got a pretty uh, super extended ball joint up front. Um, I worked with some custom machinists to make me custom upper control arms, um, PCI, LCAs, to get some caster in it. And the, the list goes on and on. And I'm kind of getting close to, the car works pretty well, like second place this weekend, I'm really happy with it. And the car is getting there, but it still needs some fine tuning. It's just so cool that I mean, this is what I love about JLTC. This yeah. is what I love about grid life. You just wanted to build this vehicle. And yeah, I want to pretty be much unique. like shape it yeah. to the rules, which are pretty loose, realistically. Yeah, and that's what I love about the class is like they allow you to kind of like build something unique like this. Like in a normal class, doing tub work and stuff like that would instantly put you into like an unlimited like GT3. But like Adam Jabe is like, hey, like, it doesn't really increase performance. You're just allowed to run a bigger tire at a lower ride height. So he allowed it this season. So I was like, all right, we're gonna make it work. And yeah, it just allows you to build a cool car. There's so many cool cars in the class and I wanted to build something unique. Like I didn't want to build another S2000 or a Corvette. I wanted to build a JTCC inspired Civic that's competitive in the class. And I think I got pretty close. Yeah, because the, the point is to, to have a car that pretty much resembles what somebody would drive on the street. And yeah. this is like, this was somebody's daily driver. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> for a long time. I mean, you know? Daryl, like, he had a case swap in it. Like, he did a lot of fun things with it. And he wanted me to build it into, like, my vision of what a sedan could be. And, like, this is it. And, like, ever since I grew up, like, those JTCC race cars were just, like, so badass. Like, they were tucking rim on all four corners. They had 18 by eight and a half, like huge wheels. It's so like, I really wanted to kind of achieve that look. Currently I'm on 17s right now, but I think next year the goal is to step up to the 18s and like really go after that JTCC vibe. So, um, as you can see, I'm a backseat driver. It is <laughs> so far back. Yeah. Uh, so like with this, I never built a race car from scratch for myself. And that's what I really wanted to do with this car is kind of push my abilities as a builder and like really try new things. And one of the first things I wanted to do was move the seat as far back as possible. Mainly for weight distribution, you want to get as much weight to the back as you can, because obviously front wheel drive cars with the engine in the front, you know, you're going to have a 65% front bias. Whereas if I sit a foot further in the back, um, that helps that case. Also, like I'm pretty tall, but moving the seat as far back as possible kind of was an excuse for me to do a pedal box. So we did a Tilton 850 series pedal box and there was a lot of cool things about it. Like we did the frame on that. We got dual masters obviously, and it works really well. I'm still kind of fine tuning it, but it's been phenomenal at this event. And yeah, the other challenges that kind of arise from obviously the steering wheel, I basically extended the OEM steering column about an extra foot. So I cut it, <laughs> welded it, extended it. And then my friend Pat at Old Boys custom machine these, uh, basically supports to kind of give the wheel some rigidity because it's it's so long that you need the support as, as far as you can. It looks great. I yeah, think it looks really, cool. he's a, an amazing machinist. Um, so I'm kind of glad I got in touch with him because I got a few more things I need machining. 
Um, man, does cool does it feel weird to sit this back when you're racing? I will say, um, driving it on the streets is pretty scary because I can't see out the B pillar. But like on track, I, I feel right at home. Um, like. The first few laps in this car, I was like used to it immediately. And then the other challenge, obviously, was was moving the shifter far back. So Hybrid Racing designed this like awesome, um, I call it the command center, which houses basically all of my, you know, critical items. You know, I got my brake bias here, I got a prop valve, kill switch, fire bottle, and then I got a PDM button pad, and then obviously the Hybrid Racing shifter. So I really wanted to move it as far back as I could and up to be close to the wheel. So everyone thinks it's like a sequential, but no, it's still it's still a six speed. Yeah. But with that, like we had to get custom cables to make it longer. So there's a lot of a lot of things on this car that we had to kind of custom make just to make it work. It's so nice. I love it so much. Very, very good utility. Thanks, man. You got the anti gravity. Yeah, two, anti -gravity. two and a half pound or three pound battery. Yeah, it's it's stupid light. Yeah, it's basically nothing. But it's interesting that you're running this, but then you have to run all this weight. Yeah. Well, that. 50 pounds right there was because I did well throughout the weekend. So if, if you do well in a GLTC race, if you get first, second, or third, you have to add weight to the car to kind of equalize yourself to the competition. So I got two seconds, which means I had to add 100 pounds of weight. Um, so yeah, so it's kind of funny. You're trying to get lightweight, but then you also have to add weight to it as well. But the interior was like a big focus point of me because I wanted to make it clean. Um, I worked on a lot of pro cars, GT3, NSXs, TCR Civics, and there's a lot of things that kind of inspired me to do the things the way I did them. Um, like all the wiring harnesses I wanted to keep clean. I did all the custom fuse boxes, the Haltech, everything kind of came together. And then of course having it all close to me as a driver because obviously I can't reach the dashboard to do like a button switch. So it worked out really well. but. Um, one of the one of the major kind of lessons from the hatch crash was I wanted to be a lot safer because I'd never expected to be in a crash like that and I kind of owed it to my parents to be safer in the cars that I race. So with the cage work, it's significantly beefier. We went from 1.5 inch cage to 1.75 with dough call tubing. And, you know, we did like the FIA bars, all the attachment points, and then a full fire suppression system, radio, so I can, you know, tell my crew like what happened. Because when I when I went off for Road America, my parents didn't know where I was. They didn't know if I was okay. So my mom was worried sick, and I was like, you know what? Like we need all these safety things just to make my parents' lives a little bit easier. So, but yeah, I mean, everything in here came together super well. I did all the paint work. Um, I would never do it again because painting interiors is is miserable. <laughs> but um, yeah, like everything is inspired by kind of the touring cars. You know, we did the dark gray metallic. You know, David Cordell from Hyrule was like, we got to do dark metallic. It's going to look good. And I think it was a good choice. I think um, the metallic gray is, is, is sick. So I guess the million dollar question is, is this faster than the egg? So it's hard to compare both cars because the rules with GLTC last year was we were on Hoosiers. So the EG hatch was on 15 inch 225 Hoosiers. And for those who know, Hoosier slicks are phenomenal. They have so much grip. And this year we changed the street tires. So that was another reason why I wanted to step up from a 15 to a 17, is just because you get a lot more tire, less overheating, more kind of like longitudinal grip. So I think this car is a better built car than the hatch significantly, because I built it from the ground up and there was a lot of lessons I learned on the hatch. I do think it has a little bit more refinement to go. This is only its second event. I think the fact that I got second, like I'm kind of blown away. But yeah, I do think the car needs a little bit more refinement. The front geometry isn't ideal, so I think I need to work on that a little bit. But I think next year the car is going to be epic. So right now it was pretty good this weekend, but it's only going to get better. This is my favorite part of the build is the build is done. Now I just got to make it faster. So I think the competition this year in GLTC has stepped up massively. Like all the ASM guys, Jeremy Swenson, and there's a few new guys that have just been killing it on the street tires. I've never raced on street tires, so I'm still kind of figuring it out. And especially with like setup and stuff. But yeah, a lot of people ask me that question and it's kind of hard to answer it. But I do think this car will be miles better than the hatch once it's 100%. Hmm. Part it's of it is because you were part of it uh, or you were um, it, it there me, the whole way. Yeah, it took me five years to build the hatch and get it to where it's at. And of course I learned a lot of things from it, but it's still gonna take a few events just to kind of fine tune this car, dial it in. Um, I built this car in eight months. So there was a few steps I kind of skipped. Like I didn't really model the geometry. I didn't measure my roll centers, but this off season, everything's gonna be much slower for me. So I can really kind of dive into those details and optimize it. I think 
The big goal next year is to switch to a five lug setup and run 18s on the car and potentially go to a bigger tire with a little bit more weight. But we're gonna see, I guess, what the GLTC rules, what the rule changes are, if there is gonna be any, because I don't want to kind of start building it now and then have it change for next year. But I love this car. I really want to enjoy it more than just racing. This is essentially my dream car, and um, I don't know, I just love everything about it. I'm super humbled that everybody, you know, comes up to me and they're like, man, we're following the build, like it looks awesome. So like, I'm super grateful with all the love and yeah. I, I just love that it's still street registered. I think that's hilarious. Yeah, I got historic place for Ohio. I got blinkers, everything. It's uh, so, drive it on the road. That's so funny. Cause the hatch, I, I never had it street registered. So I was like, I only enjoy it on the weekends, but this I'm like, hey man, like I want to go to cars and coffee. Like I want to go to meets, cruise around with the boys. So. <laughs> It's just yeah. so cool in yeah. a legit touring car. Just awesome. Yeah. So there's um, um, there's a few like specific changes to this that I think were a lot better than the hatch. For the I guess the big one is we went to a drive-by wire setup. So it's a ninth gen Civic SI throttle body that we had a custom adapter made. Designed by Hybrid, machined by my boy Pat, and this allows me to detune, so I can pull throttle body percentage based on the RPM. So. Full power, this makes about 235 to the wheels on E85, but we detune it down to 187. So Rick from Haltech, um, he's my tuner. We just pull power and it makes 187 from like 6K all the way to 8,000. And that's just the way the power to weight ratio works in GLTC. Got it, so then the drive-by wire, yeah. it just opens so, it up enough for it to it, make Yeah, exactly, power. so it's like 100% and then you watch it, then it starts to drop and then it goes to like 40% and then it kind of stays there. So 40% throttle on this engine still makes almost 190 horsepower. It's kind of crazy. That is K24s cool. are phenomenal and, and they're still pretty cheap, but I think now they're kind of going up in price because everybody wants them, but I got, I got to stock up on a few. But yeah, so like changes like that, not only we have detuning, but we have auto blip downshifts, and we also have like flat shifting. So you can do all that stuff with the Haltech. It's, it's really good. We did a wide wire engine harness. We got coil rad cooling now. So we got the pocket radiator and this big oil cooler up top here and a lot of hybrid racing, you know, shifters. We got the coolant thermostat um, housing. So nice. yeah, it all kind of uh, worked out really well, like the tilt-in reservoir, because obviously we got the, the pedal box. And oh, another cool thing is I wanted to mount the sway bar inside the engine bay. Mm. So the cage builder, he kind of tied everything into this corner here and down to the frame rail. And then he put kind of two weld nuts so we can mount the, it's like a NASCAR style spine sway bar. It's like a 1.25 inch. And you can kind of see the arms here. They go down and they use uh, Eibach end links to connect to the LCA. So with this sway bar, I can quickly swap it out, put something stiffer or get something softer on it. And I have adjustment on the arms. So it's that was like another cool thing I really wanted to try. Cause you probably didn't even really have much room down there, huh? So like the way the OEM sway bars work is like they snake around the subframe. Yeah. And like, you can't take them out. Like you have to drop the subframe, take it out. It's a pain in the ass. So you have zero adjustment. You kind of select the sway bar and then just run it. Whoa, you could pull it out of right here. Yeah, basically. so you, take the wheels you can kind of see the arm if you look through the wheel, <laughs> it connects to an Eibach um, end link. That is so cool. I don't know if you can see it. But that anyway, is... yeah, you just take the wheel out and you just pull the whole I, bar out. This, you can basically, swap it. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. is so cool. I love that. So, yeah, like, like things like that is, you know, the things I wanted to try out and like make work. Um, it's, it's cool to see like the axle is pointed up so much. Yeah. Because of how low this thing is. What so is this, a show car? The upper control <laughs> arm is like at max compression. It's at like a 50 degree angle upwards. Like oh it's kind of ridiculous, but it, it works. Like yeah. the car handles pretty good. It's not perfect. I would say it's about 80% there, but like I said, I really want to kind of focus on the details this off season and make everything else work. The, the tie rods, I had to notch the frame to make the tie rods clear. Cause when it turns, it gets really close to the frame rail. That's and then awesome. custom length axles because everything is different. The engine's higher, the wheels are higher. So yeah, there's uh, so many things I had to figure out along the way. But um, yeah, the car's here, it's running really well and it's honestly exceeding my own expectations. So cool, so cool. I'm glad you're back. I'm yeah. glad you're racing this. Really, really cool. Thank yeah, you thanks, so much. Man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Hopefully we won't wreck this one. Yeah, and, uh, no, don't say that, don't say that. I, no, 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 I almost no. did that this weekend. And no. I, gotta, I gotta cool down a little bit, but. Where, where? going over the hill? I, I try to go flat down the hill oh. during the top 10 shootout, and I realized real fast that that wasn't going to happen, so I had to lift. <laughs> I'll show you the video. Yeah, yeah, it was probably crazy. It yeah. was probably the the sketchiest save I had. You, I was, you, I was you tried hot. to go flat yeah. down the hill onto few, the front straight. I did it a few times this weekend when the tires are in a really good state, and I was like, ah, the tires are good. We can do it. 
could not do it. <laughs> oh my but, um, God. Like the funny thing is, because the wheels are so big and kind of sunk in, this is a, a 17 by 9 245. Um, I had to put steering rack stoppers. They're like 30 mil thick to prevent the wheels from rubbing on the frame rails. Right. So like the joke of this me, of the off season me building is like, man, you're gonna like spin out because you're not gonna have enough lock to save a spin. I got enough lock. <laughs> but you, you, I, I'm going you down the hill and I had full lock and I'm like, oh. <laughs> so then I was like, all I can do is full throttle, hope and pray I can come out of it, and it did. And I was like, oh my gosh, let's not let's not do that again. But the um, I guess the wheel and tire package is kind of we have a stagger rule now, a plus or minus 20 mil. So the car is supposed to run a 225, but I can run a 245 up front and a 205 in the back. Oh, so it's that's loud, cool. right? Yeah. And it kind of helps front wheel drive cars. It helps like mid-engine cars. Yeah, you can but rotate easier. The the crazy thing about this car is, at the start of the race, the car is really gripped up. Front tire is doing great. Then the front tires kind of start to fall off, and the rear tires just go away because they're so small. And like especially the outside left. It's so small that it just like heats up and then you just have no grip at all. So the car gets really sketchy and it's uh, it's kind of scary because it doesn't really have as much aero either. Like that wing's not doing that much. But hey, it's fun. I love it. A little bit of counter steer in a front wheel drive car, just full throttle, push out of it. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for showing it to us. We love shooting Grid Life. We love shooting GLGC. Lime Rock is amazing. Epic uh, track. I, I cannot wait to come back. Yeah, this was a good one. See you guys in the next video.